Hello, my name is Madison Sklar, and I will be presenting a makeup piece from The Phantom of the Opera, music and lyrics by Andrew Lloyd Webber, and I proudly represent Troop 4992. To begin, please open the table of contents. Considering we are on an online platform, I tried to make this as simple as possible for you today. I made a Google Drive with all my documents in case you want to look over them during my presentation or after. I may not spend enough time on a document and you may want to go back and look at it. The table of contents is in order of the documents on the drive. So I shall be starting off with the boards, then move on to the concept statement, instruction sheets, and so on and so forth. To begin, please open my first board, the phantom board. It is titled IA. Here's my virtual board on the first page. On the second page, we can see them closer up, and then I transcribe them because I know handwriting can be hard to read sometimes, especially on a small screen. The phantom, as we all know, has scarring all over one half of his face and a beautiful face on the other side. I tried to show his beauty in my makeup, but I also like to show the destroyed side. I chose scene 9 from Act 2 specifically because this is a scene right after Christine rips off his mask, revealing his face to the audience. Not only can we see his mangled face, but we can also see his hair. His hair seems to be melted off with a very deep widow's peak. Though we do not know how this deformity came about, because it is not explained in the script, we can infer it is from a birth defect or a mistake that happened, perhaps chemically. I put darker tones under his eyes because I believe this drags down the eyes, showing the sorrow that is in his eyes. He's a very trauma-filled character, and I think dragging down his eyes will show that. I used prosthetics for scarring because it is easy to just reapply it, and you can use it with multiple uses. It is also more sustainable and won't crumble apart during the performance compared to the way that scar wax would probably react. The bald cap was definitely the hardest part to achieve. It took me around an hour, so please take that into consideration when you are doing his makeup. And if you apply it and remove it correctly, it is multiple use. I made the hair on top of the bald cap by getting extensions, clipping them into proper sizes, and then attaching them with liquid latex adhesive. Now to move on, let's open the Christine board, titled IB. Christine has the most natural features in this play. She displays the standard of beauty during the 1800s with flushed cheeks, that rosy lip look, and thin eyebrows with pale skin. We did durability tests on these actors, including the Phantom and Carlotta actors. They lasted a bit over three hours, which is a very good piece of information to know because these actors would be in this makeup for a very long time. Though, of course, these actors would have touch-ups in between scenes. Christine's hair is brown with very tight ringlet curls. I achieved this look by using extensions on my actor because she naturally has brown hair and I thought it would be more realistic opposed to a wig. The extensions blended in nicely with her hair and I used a half-inch curling iron to achieve the ringlets. Christine is 15 years of age in the book that this musical is based off of, so she has childlike features and is very natural. The natural component of her makeup displays her innocence. And the final board I'll be showing is Carlotta. Carlotta is an extremely bold character. I wanted to showcase that in her makeup. Clearly, this is my most bold character that I worked on. She has very bright yellow eyeshadow and very bright blush and very bold red lips. The style of makeup with the white complexion with the bold makeup over it was very popular for opera uses back then. The operas used this look because it made the audience members easier to see their facial expressions. Yellow is known as the most bold color. It draws the eyes most, so I used this on Carlotta because I think it accurately represents her personality. Her hair should be in a Mary Antoinette styled wig. This is a lot smaller of a wig than I would have used during the real show, but Realistically, on a local theater budget or a high school theater budget, this wig would be ideal because it is more financially safe than buying a humongous $200 wig. The budget that I conducted all in all was $290. I did this by estimating the prices and considered the fact that this is for the whole cast, not only the three people that I did.
Due to our unique situation, I am aware from past experiences doing makeup pieces that we don't really much discuss the makeup instructions or extraneous things in my binder because the judges are to look at them while I am talking. So I shall give you a moment to look at that stuff. I was just informed that I cannot attach my drive as well to my video. So right now I'll be showing you my extra work in the binder. Please feel free to pause because I'll probably be going at a bit of a faster pace as I would like to because of the time limit. But to move on from that, I shall be browsing through the photos, so please take the time right now to look at them. I chose this show for specific reasons. I think the musical is a great choice for makeup design. There are such diverse characters, and I can display diverse types of makeup. I can show natural makeup, overdone stage makeup, and special effects. And in general, I believe this is a classical show that everyone loves. Thank you.